even with Samson or Latunji. Thank you very much for your love. I really appreciate you for sparing your unquantifiable time to listen to the topics we treat in this family. Thank you for your comments and likes. Also important is the appropriateness of giving you a special package of thank you, hug, and kisses to those that have been kind enough to hit the subscribe icon and are therefore full members of this family. You are the reasons this channel has continued to work stronger and stronger, and I cannot thank you enough. Not far from the building in which my office is located are some rows of evenly spaced trees that provide shade for cars from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Since there are more cars than can be accommodated in the shade, only 30 earliest arrivals enjoy the covering. Other car owners have the options of either going further to get shade for their cars or simply park them along the street where the intense heat from the sun will have turned them into mobile ovens by the close of work. One particular day around noon, I noticed that only one car was parked in one of those spaces meant for two. Why? The human being that got there first had parked his car right in the middle of the space, thus leaving inadequate space in the right, on the right and the left side. I recognized the car as one that had always been the second to occupy the space. After reviewing the scenario seriously, I arrived at the conclusion and with conviction too that the owner of that car was guilty of first great selfishness that passes for wickedness. Why? Firstly, the opportunity he had always enjoyed was what he blocked another person from accessing. And secondly, he's obviously not a novice driver as he had always made use of a space left after another car had been parked on one side of the space. Funnily enough, about a fortnight later, I saw from afar a man trying to park his car, beautiful car, in one of the covered spaces. I saw that as he stepped out of his car and realizing that the space left would not be enough for a second vehicle, he re-entered the car, put it in reverse gear, drove forward again and moved it nearer one of the trees to leave enough space for an additional car. He did all of this without being aware that anyone was watching him. I got to him just as he was locking the door. I love your beautiful car and its unique color, sir, I said to him. He smiled and answered, thank you, sir. Then I continued. Very much more important than the beauty of your car is the beauty of your highly considerate heart. When I saw that he was surprised, I told him my observations about him and what I had noticed about another car weeks earlier. I encouraged him to keep up his selflessness and integrity. Which of the two car owners is like you? Which of them do you like? The wicked and selfish or the considerate and selfless? Our topic for this discourse is Selflessness, what, why, how. Selflessness is the predisposition to always consider others' interests as equal to or sometimes more important than yours. This stems from the consciousness that you are just like a jolt in a vast universe of people. Selflessness is regarded as the loftiest moral ideal of the ancient times. Perhaps the greatest challenge today is that everyone is somehow selfish. It's no coincidence that whether in writing or in speech situations, there is no selfishness or selflessness without self. Within selflessness and selfishness, there is self. Self is indeed also referred to as the center of every human being 
the selfish and the selfless inclusive. Unfortunately, most people are not aware they are selfish. If they were, they would have worked on themselves to get rid of this odious tendency and our world would have been blessed with a much greater degree of sanity. The opposite of selflessness manifests in diverse ways, including littering the environment, driving in the middle of the way, thus preventing any other road user from bypassing you safely, being in conflict with various people too often. In fact, the rate at which you get into conflict with other people is a trustworthy indicator of your degree of selfishness. Unfortunately, most people never stop to consider the possibility that the causes of the conflicts in which they find themselves don't necessarily reside in the other persons. Other signs of selfishness include always talking about yourself in conversations with little patience to listen to others, few or no records of looking out for other people's interests, becoming aggressive, throwing tantrums, whenever outcomes don't align with your preferences and other less obvious signs. Why are most people afraid of being selfless? One reason is that people usually try to take advantage of a selfless person. They want to take you for a ride, doing to you bad things they dare not do to others who are as selfish as they. If you give them your overall, they still demand your underwear. If you don't flare up in revenge when they slap you on the right cheek, they go for your left cheek even with, before, before you turn into that to them. Many people are therefore on the offensive so that no one may attempt taking advantage of them. This, however, is not enough excuse for getting oneself integrated into the evil fold of the selfish people. All you need to do is know your limits because those trying to take advantage of your generosity do not know yours or theirs. A second is that many people are simply afraid of being different. So they join the multitude. The third reason is many people have not noticed anyone in their neighborhood that models selfishness, selflessness rather. Selflessness is thus strange to them. Our world is that bad. Why do we have to eschew selfishness and embrace selflessness? Selflessness helps not only to give, but also to receive. You receive new ideas, ability to see things from other people's perspectives, goodwill from those who notice your, 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 your selflessness, your exemplary qualities, and other goodies. To avoid unprofitable repetition, I would refer you to one of our earliest videos in which we discussed the benefits of a good life. The benefits of a good life are also benefits of selfless living because the latter is a component of the former. How then can we cultivate a personal life of selflessness and thereby encourage a culture of selflessness, selfless living at the societal level? Take ample time to meditate on the destructive impacts of selfishness on your relationships at the micro, the macro, and the mega levels. Think critically about the instances in which selfishness has destroyed your relationships at the interpersonal, societal, and global level. Then imagine how the narratives would have been much better, much more pleasant if you, the other persons, or most people in the society had been selfless. Then you will almost automatically develop a great deal of holy hatred for selfless, selfishness and corresponding love for selflessness. Invest time in reviewing how you felt when some people acted selfishly against you. 
Don't let that throw you into resentment or vendetta. Rather, let it strengthen you to resolve not to be an instrument to make others suffer from similar emotional trauma. When people make you suffer unnecessarily through their acts of selfishness, is your spontaneous reaction a wish not that they should be punished? Think of the testimonials of people who have been acknowledged to have selflessly served their community. This will enable you to know that you are not on an impossible mission by aspiring to practical selfless living. Refuse to be overwhelmed or discouraged by the mass selfishness of a million others. Give in to the spirit of giving, nudging you. To teach others selflessness, be innovative in your approach. Many people have tried to enforce selflessness in the past, but they got discouraged when their efforts yielded no, nothing but frustration. Some time ago, I read about how someone was able to teach the value of cooperation and selflessness to some children. He gave a balloon to each of the children and asked each to write his or her name on it for easy identification. Then he took all the balloons and put them in a large room. Afterwards, he gave the children a challenge. Each of them was to pick out his or her balloon from the lot within 20 minutes. All the children swooped on the jumbo lot, searching for their labeled balloons. At the expiration of the given time, none of them was able to locate his or her balloon. The teacher then Give them 20 minutes to do the same exercise differently. This time, each child was to pick the first balloon that got into his or her hand and look for the owner and hand it over to the owner. Within the stipulated time, every child had gotten their balloon in their hands. What an interesting and effective way to demonstrate the beauty the beautiful reward in looking out for other people's interests that one's interests might be taken care of. It also requires deliberate practice. You may have to write specific to-do lists about particular needs of certain members of your family, friends, and members of the society, and go ahead and act. Practice looking for social development directed activities you can get involved with, along with other people. It's not only money that people need. People need certain material and non-material things that you can easily afford. No matter how tight your schedules and clumsy activities, you can spare a moment to greet someone warmly. That may be all they need at that moment to overcome the temptation to go and commit suicide. A momentary flash of an infectious smile may be an invaluable gift from you to someone. However, if you are cocooned in the enclave of self, prisoned in the pursuit of your self-pursuit, fears, aspirations, failures, and so on, you may not have a smile for yourself. Talk more of giving any to any other person. Never lose sight of the transient nature of human existence in general and the brevity of your life in particular. Take note, the only form of selfishness that is acceptable and godly is that in which you derive pleasure for yourself by helping others and giving them sacrificial help that is going to better their lives. This calls to question the reality of the concept of altruism. At the same time, it is be far better to relish being considerate with other people than care less whether they survive or die. Last but not the least, acknowledge every act of selflessness that do someone does near you, just as I did to that man with a beautiful heart in a beautiful car. That would go a long way in spreading 
a culture of selflessness.